All right, thank you, Deidre. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Beautiful Wednesday to all of you. My name is Leigh Bella Rolson, and I'm here with Faber Castell USA and Michael Storrs to bring you another class. And I love Wednesday, and I do apologize for my background. As you can see, it's pretty empty today. Usually, this is not our usual view. Um, we have more happy products over there in the back, but uh, we are in the middle of moving. So I, t I kid you not, today is such a perfect time to kind of like calm down because my brain is like discombobulated. I have just been stressing, you know, move, moving is never fun, but um, I'm so glad to have this an hour of, you know, this moment with you to kind of relax and um, create and do something creative. So I would like to thank everybody for being here today. But um, before we get started, um, I would like to know if any of you here today, do you keep a journal? How many of you are doing mixed media or even just a simple journaling, um, like a notebook or a planner, a bullet journal? I'd love to see that in the chat. So we can have a little conversation while we're, you know, learning something and just playing. And also, if you'll be creating with me today, would love to see some of your work. You can tag Michael Stores and, of course, Faber Castell USA. And I'd love to stay in touch. You can follow me at Mommy Lay as well. Um, and yeah, we can get this class started. I'm going to switch over to the overhead. If you have any questions uh, while and during the class, please do let me know. I'll try my hardest to look at the chat section while we're doing this. All right, so in front of me, I have my Faber Castell Gelatos. This is just a silicone um, that is part of the intro to watercolors. You can get that from Michaels as well. I do have some colors in here that I picked, but by all means, if you have other colors in there available, you can definitely just um, use those. You don't have to use the, the specific colors. Um, also, I'm looking at Julie says, I do keep my mixed media journal. There you go. Bullet mixed media. Perfect. Madeline said. Brie said she loves journaling, Bible journaling to perfect, art journaling, dot journal. Yes. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. All right. So Julie's asking what can be used in place of the squid ink? Yeah, I was just talking about the gelatos. Right now, this is a pretty, pretty color. This is new to me. I actually purchased this from Michael's store online. You can also use the Earl Grey, this one. I'm going to go over <laughs> where my bag of gelatos are. It's so crazy. Um, so mixed media, honestly, is just it, the meaning of it is in the word itself, mixed media. Um, and it's it can be as simple as using a pen and a marker. You know, you're using two medias together. So it's different medias. You're using it together. All right. And so you can use the Earl Grey. Um, instead of the squid ink, the Earl Grey would be a much cooler. The, um, the squid one would be a much warmer tone, but they're both beautiful. But like what I said, if you don't have these colors, that's fine. I mean, you can just use whatever that, um, what is your favorite color combination and all that, you know, because this is gonna be relaxing and I don't want you guys to stress over colors that you may not have. Um, silver eyes is also pretty, but very cool. And of course it's metallic. So that's a good one also. Um, whenever I'm doing any type of mixed media, I always have a silicone, <laughs> I always have a silicone mat in here because this is where I kind of mix my colors, blend my colors. And also it's just to protect also your surface, your table, your desk, you know? Um, and so we, I have buttercream in here. I have guava. This is such a pretty color. This is from the, um, this is a pastel shade. It's super pretty. Whenever I'm doing mixed media journaling, I, it's so different. I want to show you guys a little bit of the example of my journaling. And so like what I said, mixed media is just mixing medias together. And I think, you know, people try to make that a little complicated. And so when people ask me how to get started with mixed media, I said, get a notebook, get a pen, get a marker or a watercolor. It's just 
mixing together. So what I have here, I love scrapbooking. I love journaling. I love anything about documenting. It's just, this is my, my time machine. I get to pause and go back. I know exactly what happened this day. This is when we made a puppet. You know, pictures are beautiful that way. And I am a mom. And so my kids, they're growing up so fast. And so I love keeping a notebook in here. I have a traveler's notebook as well. Are you guys familiar with the traveler's notebook too? I love using that also. The traveler's notebook is this one. It's narrow, but it's the same height as an A5 size, but it's just much um, smaller in width, you know? So <laughs> I just love keeping notebooks. I, I keep journals. I also have pocket journals, um, the album style and all that. So when we talk about mindful journaling, really it's it's something that it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to require a lot of supplies. It could be just, you know, a marker and just putting down your thoughts into paper. I am such a believer of being mindful, being in the zone. If you want to really get in touch with yourself, whatever it is, the stress I know personally, it really does help me a lot to kind of sit down and just relax, put my thoughts down in paper, document, put down pictures and all this glue stuff, you know, sticking things. There's just something so therapeutic about peeling a paper, sticking it on another piece of paper. And there's just this, this process is just so relaxing to me and also healing at times when I know that I'm in a very deep stress that's what I do. I mean, it's like, it's, it's almost like counterproductive, right? It, it's, you want to do something because you're stressing, but you kind of pause. I, I always say about recharging really does help, you know, mentally, physically. So whether it is 10 to 15 minutes a day, you would find me with a pen and a notebook, and I would write down whatever it is, just thoughts, you know, thoughts that are rushing in my head. I'm so stressed right now. Instead of me talking about it, you know, putting that into words verbally, I would just put it onto paper. And what I do when I'm doing the mindful journaling is this is where the gelatos would come in because all the thoughts, the frustrations and all that, I love to cover it up. So I would cover up with a pattern paper, a scrapbooking paper, stick it down into that page or get a black, much darker shade of gelatos or a marker. And I would you know, cover that scribble, whatever those frustrations are. There's something about that process that is just, wow. I, it, it was just so helpful to me. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that as well. So these are just samples of that. And, and sometimes there, there's no photos. As you can see here, this is just a mix of stencil, stamping, um, and then some stickers and card stocks in here. This one, I love this page so much. I used some texture paste in here. So I have some texture paste. If you have any texture paste in there, you can use that. Any type of stencils that you may have, if you wanna grab some um, ephemera like this, you can do so, or stickers in there, or just our markers and our gelatos today. Carrie said she loves Traveler's Notebook. Oh, that's me too. All right, okay, so. I am going, today I'm going to be using my, my new, it's actually a new journal. I got this one from Michael's also. This is from, uh, I think Dinah Wakely made this one. So from Ranger. Uh, this one has different surface. I love working in different surface because this one is like a jeans. So a, a fabric, a jean fabric. And so it, it's just super crazy fun to test all my supplies of here and see how it's going to um to settle this is a canvas you know so it's like it's all different so you have three in here and this is like a burlap so it's just fun to experiment and the results are different each time and so i also have this old journal of mine i this one is from ranger as well um so you can see i did a lot of journaling in here it gets too crackly and also a little bit of um sticking because I would always put a Mod Podge to kind of sit, um, set all of this in here. So I have 
um, distress inks in here. I am using gelatos, I'm using markers, I'm using texture paste. So this one is also super beautiful. And as you can see, when people ask me, what is your style when it comes to journaling? As you can see here, I it's a mix of everything. I have like where it looks like a cartoon. And then I have this where it's like an old, you know, um, uh, an old shabby chic style. Um, Mary is, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> Thank you for answering that. So that's from Dinah Wakely, the blue journal. So we have this one. So I love using acrylic. I love using watercolors and all that. So when they say, okay, so when we do journaling, is there a rule? I would always say there's really no rule, but you also have to understand your um, medias that you're using, you know? So you don't put one on top of the other, like the oil, you know, it will not blend well with water-based materials um, or medias. Um, so acrylic watercolors are good. But like what I said, you can always set that on top and then put in another layer, put in another layer. The thing that's going to help you the most is to really, really experiment with your mediums. So no matter what it is, if it's a new medium to you, always experiment, you know, try not to expect the perfect in the beginning and just let go of any of those expectations and see what you come up with. And I think that's the beautiful part of the mindful journaling is that there's no expectations. It's always in the process. Oh no, I'm so sorry. How come, no, Michaels, come on, make them available in Canada. This is not fair. No. Are you able to order it from the US and have it shipped? But the crazy shipping, isn't it? Oh, I hate that. Shipping gets super expensive. No. All right. So here, um, I actually, you know, you have to forgive me. I packed my gesso. I would usually gesso it. If you'd allow me just a couple minutes, I can dig in my box. See if I have my gesso in here. I would always gesso my surface. It always helps. You can use, here we go. I was able to grab some. This is an acrylic gesso. Uh, you can use a clear one if you'd like. You can actually use a black one also for that. Um, I also have some stencils here. This one is from Faber Castell. This one is available on Michael's online. So this is a, the Mandela set. I'm gonna pick some Mandela in here. So when I'm doing mindful journaling, it's all about textures and all about mark makings. I love doing mark makings. Um, this one is made out of a cardboard. So what I do with these just to make them last a little bit longer is I would put a clear gesso on top of this one just to kind of like protect that surface. I'll get this. This one is from a different set, but there's like a hexagon, but we can always draw that as well. All right, so I also have my heat gun. I love this one. This is from Ranger. This one is quiet because heat gun can be really loud, but this one is really quiet. So it's not, you know, obnoxious. Sometimes it can get really obnoxious because it gets super loud. So like what I said, when I'm working with mixed media, I have a silicone surface, or actually I have a glass mat as well that I use. I love using those because it just protects your table. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to use the gesso and just kind of, I'm gonna place that gesso in there. All right. And then I will grab a brush. Most of the time I would use a palette knife like this because the gesso can be sticky and if you don't brush your, if you don't wash your brush fast enough, it will get, you, it will ruin your brush. So but you can use brush as long as you don't use your expensive brushes, especially for just applying gesso because it can get, you know, um, it can ruin your brushes. You can also use a sponge, um, those cheap ones. Those definitely work, but I like the palette knife because while I'm doing this, it actually creates a texture on the surface. So when I'm kind of like moving and swirling around the gesso, what it does is like it creates this rough texture. 
so that I already have this base right away. And I'm not sure if it's only me, but I tend to over, over squeeze my gessos like that. So I have so much. And what it does is that it just takes forever to dry. So I would normally, I know it's wasting. I do apologize. But sometimes it's like, oh, I just want to take out some because I over squeeze things. It's kind of like in glue. When I'm gluing something, I always end up with a mess because the glue is like all over the place. <laughs> she said that she has every dino wakery. I know, isn't it amazing? I have the sprays as well. I just love Ranger also. And the one thing about the gelatos is that I didn't realize how versatile this gelato is because when I was first introduced to it, like, how do you use this thing? You know, it was, it was just a puzzle to me. It's like a lipstick. How the hell does this work? And so when you're working with mixed media, always have baby wipes or a rag um, that you can use. Look, I have a gelato in there. You can use and just kind of like wipe stuff right away because it can get really messy, really fast. So baby wipes to the rescue or just a rag that, you know, it's like a kitchen rag that uh, mine is like full of paints as well. But I always have a baby wipes. Here we go. And so I'm just going to heat this one. So we have a texture already. Now I want you to think about what you really want to do today, because this page is going to be all about you and your thoughts, your feelings, whatever it is that you want to express in the page. So whether you want to scribble something down, something down, or you want to doodle something, you want to uh, draw um, a portrait, an eye, a face, you know, whatever, a house, a book, or something, think about what you want to do. Mine is just, I am playing along with you. So I just want to share with you my process of what I do when I'm doing a journaling also. Um, and hopefully this helps. I actually don't have a plan in my head. Are you the same way? I mean, do you have this when you're working in a project, do you already have, do you already see it in your mind, what you want to do? I know I created this workshop a month ago. And so when I was doing that, I have this vision of these colors, but now my emotions are different from how I did that a month ago. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be totally different from how I did it and the sample picture that I created. All right, so as you can see, it, you can see where it's going to turn matte because the one that I have is matte. But if yours is gloss, it can be a little difficult to know when it's dry. I just love this page, it's so thick. It doesn't warp because I use a lot of product in here and it's just, it's amazing, this blue book. I can't wait to fill this one up. And this one is just a piece of uh, tissue paper that I used here because I didn't want the paint to bleed into the other side. So I just kind of covered with that one. All right, mine is drying up. I have just a few things that are still wet where it's a little thick. Isn't it, doesn't it look like, like candies? Especially the name, gelatos. What, you're gonna eat dessert, Relay. It's too early. The gelato is so cute. They just really look like candies. And every time I would post something on social media, on you know Instagram, what are those? It's surprising to me that still a lot of people are new to the gelatos, and they've been, you know, they've been available for quite some time now. Here we go. All right, I'm kind of trying to breathe. I want you to kind of pause a little bit also, let your, I want you to be mindful and see what you want to do today. Let the colors speak about your intention, your feelings, um, your thoughts for today. I think the grays are perfect today because like was, we're in the middle of moving. It's been, huh, I'm a little stressed and overwhelmed, you know, so. Now, what I'm going to use is I have here my pit artist pens as well. I have it in black. I also have the gold one 
and the white one. Now, again, like what I said, you don't have to have the exact things that I have here. If you have other colors, it's okay. Um, I'm using a 1.5 because rough surface can, you know, damage your brush. So I like using a bullet tip when I'm writing here. Um, unless I set my page with a gloss Mod Podge or something like that where the markers are going to blend easily. But here right now, this is a rough surface because we put in that gesso. It's slightly textured because of all that movement of that palette knife here. So if you're going to use some brush in here, it could be a little, um, could be a little rough to your um, page. All right, so let's see. I want to... You know what? I think they don't. Kim is asking if they have it in store. We have to request that because I always look for the gelatos in the store. But right now, I believe that they're only available online, Michael's stores. So we have to request it in our store to bring back the gelatos <laughs> in stores as well. So what are we going to do today? My, my last time, I did kind of like a scribble of what I was just feeling. And I think I'm going to do that. I want to start with my date. Now, when I'm doing this mindful journaling, I'm not aiming for perfect. I'm not aiming for beautiful. Most of the time when I'm doing this, everything is scribble. Everything is kind of like messy. But in the end, it, it all comes just perfectly. You know, even sometimes it's like, where am I heading? What am I doing? I don't even know what I'm doing. But it, in the end, it works out just fine. So I'm going to do that. I am going to do a little bit of journaling here and I don't want, I'm not going to make it too long because I don't want to keep you there forever. I can take forever, um, but I'm not going to do that. I'll start with the date. Although this is going to be um, covered as well, but um, I just kind of want to do a little bit of quote, a little bit of um, words. So I would love for you to do the same thing. I think this one's slightly wet. I can see where there's part of it is still wet. So I'm going to uh, try and avoid all those. Mixed media can be messy, but that's the happy mess. Try to <laughs> embrace that. If not, mixed media is not for you. If you don't like the mess, I think it's going to drive you bananas. <laughs> so here we go. It's kind of like an ASMR um, <laughs> session too with that sound of the scribble. All right. There was something about, so healing about that. Just putting all of that, what I'm carrying in my heart, just putting it on the page. It's just something ugh, that was good. I'm so glad I was able to let that out. You know, even if I didn't verbalize it, I was able to put my thoughts down into here. That feels really, really good. All right. So now I'm going to go look over some of my stencils in here. 
because I will intentionally cover some parts in here. Now, the gelatos, let's talk about gelatos. Gelatos are so versatile because you can use them many different ways. They are water-based pigment, but the beautiful thing about them is that once you apply them and you allow it to dry some drying time, they are going to be waterproof. So that means if you're doing mixed media, you can layer on top of this one. And that first layer that you apply, that's not going to move. It's going to stay in there. And it's something about that that's just so much easier when you're layering me one medium after the other. You don't have to worry about bleeding, you know, to one another, the colors. You don't want to end up with mud. So if you allow some drying time in here, if you purposely don't want to blend things, then you have to allow some drying time. Now, the heat gun is perfect with that. Um, but if you want to blend things, once it's still wet and once it's still creamy, that's where the blendability comes in. You can smudge it with your finger. You can use a baby wipes. I love using a baby wipes. Um, I also love mixing this with some texture paste to create some colors. You know, if you want to, um, like a little bit of a lifted texture in here, using a texture paste is great because that means if I wanna cover this whole thing up with a pattern, I can do so. If I just, and if I want it a little embossed, you know, a little lifted from the page, just that texture, I'm going to use a texture paste. This is from Tim Holtz. This is Distress, available at Michael's as well. Um, I am just gonna get a little bit of the gelato. So the palette knife comes in very, very handy. This is kind of like a, a lipstick. It's the same mechanism like this. See, just do it like that. Just slice away. Woo! And then I'm going to use this is brand new, also. Just open it up just for you. It's pretty special. So, kind of like smudge it together. So of course, if you want a more opaque color, you want more gelatos in here. So what I would always suggest is have two palette knives, one for mixing and then one just for kind of like getting colors from the gelato. So you don't put the texture paste in your gelato, but you know, it's, it's, it's part of the mess. You can just always clean up the surface, the top and all that. So when you're mixing, you want to be able to Kind of like, what am I trying to do here? Here we go. Can the camera pick it up? Maybe too close. But I would apply pressure to kind of blend everything in, pressing it down. Here we go. So just getting all of that. So if you want more color, if you want more opaqueness and saturation, then add more gelatos in here. So right now it's just, just this really beautiful um, coral color like that. So I'm gonna get just a little bit more um, gelatos in here. Now you can also create your own colors. You can blend two colors together and then blend it there. So I have this one and this is just for that. So you can add a little bit of red in here if you like, you know, more of that um, warmth in here. Here. But before I apply this texture paste, I actually want to cover up my writing first. This is so, it looks like whipped something yummy <laughs> do not eat it <laughs> no matter um this one is from the intro to watercolors kit i know a frosting can um, <laughs> i want to lick my finger no no matter how tempting do not okay so i want to use the buttercream in here this is going to be so pretty this two colors together but this time I'm just going to apply the gelatos directly into my page. Sorry, I'm trying to zoom out so you can see. And I'm going to concentrate on my top right over there. And I hope that my 
black one dried, but I'm looking at it. It doesn't seem like it dried completely. So there's going to be smudges in here. And I don't mind. That's the purpose of the covering part. Now you can use your fingers to just blend everything, moisten it a little bit with a little bit of that. Um, see, the black is bleeding through and that's okay. I'm fine with that. Just going to mix everything in here. Also, when we're doing, um, you want to stay in one direction. You don't want to go like what I did in here, diagonal, because there's something about that visual that gives to your eyes. So you want to go horizontal or just vertical for, for now. So here, everything is blending and bleeding, the yellow with the black. And I am I'm actually really happy with that, <laughs> believe it or not. We want that messy, messy colors in there. So I'm just adding a little bit more gelatos. Again, just concentrating on the top right and the bottom left. I did that again, didn't I? Diagonal. Go up vertical or horizontal. And it's this so creamy about it. There's just something so satisfying. It's like when my daughter is playing with her um, putties and those sticky things with glue. There we go. All right, before my texture paste dries on me, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a blending again, like that. I actually have the star stencils. I love this one. I believe one, this is from, oh, which designer? I can't remember. Let's start with a star first. And for no apparent reason, <laughs> no. Um, I wanna cover up where we didn't have much of the yellow. So I wanna put in there. I wanna make sure you fill in those areas. You're gonna see the stencils. And this is where I love using the plastic stencil is when I'm using texture paste like this. Now, if I just have a blending brush, then I don't mind the cardboards one unless I really set it. So I'm covering this area right here where we didn't apply the yellow. Although the yellow is gonna blend a little bit there in some areas, it's okay, but I'm just gonna concentrate over in this part right here. So I'm just kind of doing this with my palette knife to really have, this is kind of like baking also, isn't it? And I'm not a baker, so hello, we're in big trouble. <laughs> I will not share with you when I've tried to bake a cake. That is too embarrassing to be on the internet. <laughs> we are not gonna talk about that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go pick up just a little bit more of what we have left in here. I can see some areas where it needs some filling yummy frosting so yum yum and so when you lift your stencils you, you want to go from one corner like this and you can just slowly lift up like that right and you want to clean up your stencils right away so i would normally just clean it up here and i don't mind kind of like picking up some of the colors transferring to the page it's gonna create some stars over here. Normally I would run to the bathroom next to my office <laughs> so I can clean up the stencil, but I can't run right now. So we're gonna clean it up with a baby wipe. Um, you know what, that's a good question. I'm not sure actually. It doesn't say, it just says texture paste. It doesn't tell me if it's an acrylic. Yeah, I am. I apologize. Maybe we can check their website. Let's see, and as you can see here, there's a little bit of that transfer. So I can work on that page too later. That's fine. This time our handy dandy glue. Maybe someone here knows. Um, it dries fast 
for um, but not that fast. So it will give you enough time to kind of spread everything, um, to blend whatever it is you're blending together with a texture paste. So you'll have some ample time to kind of do anything that you need to do, but also work in um be mindful that it might dry on you and it's gonna be hard to blend things and spread things in here. You know, I, I have to admit that when I first started doing a little bit of these um, mixed media, I have completely no idea what I was doing. I was just applying things and spraying things. And, <laughs> but you know what, in the end, it might not look exactly what I had in my head, but it, I felt, it, I just felt so, it was so rewarding. Something about the messy hand, something about the really getting dirty and blending everything with my hands in here. There was something about that that's just really, really special. All right, now I'm gonna mix, if you don't have the chocolate, um, another dark, color from gelatos that's really nice is iced coffee if you don't want black if you don't want completely black then choose the iced coffee it's really nice um chocolate is new to me i just opened it today i think this is my second one i think i finished the rest of the chocolate i'm going to apply both of them so you can see the colors 10 to 15 minutes for the texture paste to dry there you go so if you don't have the heat gun then you can wait 10 to 15 minutes to let it sit in there and dry. But if you have a heat gun, then you can just, we're all done. All right, so now I'm gonna cover this one part up on the top left. And I'm just gonna apply the gelatos in here. I can dip my finger in the water and also kind of like pick up colors from here. Let's see, so you can do that also if you wanna blend right away. Again, I'm just going vertical right here. Like that. So as you can see, you can apply directly. You can pick up the color. You can use a brush, but I don't think I'll be using a lot of brush today. <laughs> we'll be dealing with this. Now, again, I like what I said. I love that you can layer on top of you know the first layer first so for this gelatos if this dry the brown side and i want to use another stencil and use a silver per se once this is dry it's not going to blend with that so that's why i, I love using it and this time i'm going to do the same i'm going to blend it vertically I'm gonna dip my finger in that water and just kind of blend of course with water you're going to lose a little bit of that saturation so if you want a more a more opaque color then i would use less moisture in here and just kind of try and blend the gelatos as it is or just keep adding layer on top of the other this one is the chocolate like that Definitely when you're working with brown, expect to have some muddy colors in here because it is brown, it is the mud color. So if you don't want any of those muddy colors, I would stay away from the brown. But right now my feelings and my emotions are a little bit browns and grays. But as you can see, there's just that little bit of that yellow to kind of give you that, oh, there's hope. <laughs> there's hope. There is nothing fun about moving, you guys. And I'm just drying this one layer and we're gonna cover this one up again. Mary said, I'm more concerned that I'll get distracted and I'll be fast enough. You know what? You're not the only one, I'm pretty sure. Trust me, I have issues with being distracted constantly. And I honestly, I don't know how I do that, <laughs> but I do. I really, really do. Now I'm going to pick the um, squid ink. This is the gray one, and I'm going to cover up parts where they're still white. So I'm just going to do that. 
I love it when the gelatos are like brand new. They're so, so creamy. Like that. And also the heat from the paper made this one much more creamier. It was easier to glide. It's kind of like slightly melted on top. So it's like really, really creamy in there. I'm just going to get in here. And get in the parts where there's like a little bit of white in there. And I don't mind. Sometimes it's all about your lines. Just going to go messy in here. And right now, the, the scribbles that we created earlier, that's part of your layer already. So that's like underneath everything, but it's like peeking through. You know, there are some areas where that's absolutely peeking through. You can see some of the scribbles. So instead of stamping, some people use some stamps, you know, um, to do that. Also collage papers, they do that. Um, magazine cutouts. Um, old uh, newspaper, old pages from a book. You know, there's so many ways to build textures when you're doing mindful journaling like this. Isn't it? Hey, Gary, what kind of colors are you using? Yes, yeah, heat the paper and it just kind of melted that gelato just a little bit for it to glide. It's so smooth. So we've learned something today. So the metallic gelatos, it, you know what? They are absolutely beautiful. How many of you have tried the iridescent gelatos in here? Because this was, this was really, really very new to me, kind of like a month ago when I first started using the iridescents because I love the metallics. And so when I got the iridescents, oh my, they, they are different in a darker um surface than in a white page and it was just so beautiful it's like you see the sheen is so different from the white and then you put it um on a black it's a different sheen to it i can't explain but it's gorgeous we have to have another session using just iridescent and then a darker page as well you might be able to pull up some iridescent here let me see Um, this is my favorite white color, the metallic icing. It's just beautiful to add highlights and all that. So this is something that you need in your stash for sure, for sure. All right. So this time, I know that I covered a little bit of the, the, the guava color in here. So I'm just going to add more and I'm just going to blend them. Oh, yeah. With your paper, a little warm. Look at this, you can just glide it. Wow, cool. Cool. Well, I'm gonna add a little bit here. You always wanna have, like when you're trying to do a cool tone, for example, to kind of match everything, you wanna add a touch of warmth in there. I always do that. Um, there's something about the balance of the cool and the warmth. And so as you can see, I applied some here, but it's not going to blend with the yellow because this is now um, another layer because we dry that yellow. That's not going to bleed through with this guava color. There's just something about that. It's beautiful. This is definitely um, a, a little bit of a mature colors. <laughs> is that a good word to use? Um, you know, I always try and writing with the, on top of the gelatos. But what I've learned is that when I use a Mod Podge to seal everything, that's where writing on top of the gelatos is um going to be much easier task because it's going to depend sometimes it gets really sticky and so i try to set it with a gloss and then that that's what helps then i can write in all my brush lettering in here much much better 
So this time I'm just following my gut, whatever it is like areas in here that I feel like, you know what, I can, I want to add some peach in there or the guava color in there. I want to bring in some yellows in here also. Let's see what it looks like on top of this brown. Just bring in some of that. Just gliding. And then I'll kind of like pick up air, like some gelatos on the side, especially when I'm applying too much pressure when applying on the page. All the sides will have like a gelato. So I kind of like just pick that up with my finger. And just like that. Usually I would use like collage paper here also, um, like that. All right, this time I'm gonna dry it again. So as you can see, I dry after one layer after the other, I just kind of try to set it with my heat gun. So everything is just right there, ready for another surface. Just set everything. I love that some of those scribbles are like peeking through. You can add some metallic to this and I think it's really gonna look so beautiful. You guys have like a metallic gold in there of the gelatos. The ice chai is gorgeous. It's not, it's kind of like a bronze, more of a gold. That's beautiful. Um, I'm gonna go, if you have a white, the metallic white, if you have coconut, that's a good white also, but that's not metallic. It's just more of a matte white color. And then I'm gonna just kind of clean my finger so I know that whatever color it is I'm gonna apply next is not gonna blend with the other one. So this one is the silver eyes. I want you guys to see what the color of the silver eyes and I'm just gonna go, I'm just creating this lines here. Again, what helps me when I'm doing any mindful journaling is pattern making, um, mark making like this. Something that draws, it draws the eyes, the visual when you have things like this. And for no apparent reason, I chose stripes. You can choose like irregular, imperfect circles like that. Since I have all the dark in here, I want to balance it a little bit. And I want to add just the mark making here with some dark one. And I am going to try to use the pit artist in here, okay? So we can see. So you can see it might be hard. The brush, the marker that I love using when I'm, if I am going to choose to do this would be the big brush of the pit artist. Since I can't do that, I'm just going to do this, smudge it. As you can see, you, there's no perfect things or imperfect things. You just kind of like go with the flow in here. Just doing that to smudge the colors, applying a little bit. You can also apply it here and then pick up your color, just kind of smudge in there. And did you know that you can actually use a little bit of water with a pit artist? Because these are water-based India ink. And I love using India ink because these are archival. So if you're using this in your journals and all that, you know that your pages are going to stay for 100 years or so. It's going to outlive you. <laughs> so, you know, the next generations are going to see your story and they'll still be able to read some of your words in there. So it's, it's something that I really, really love. Not a lot of people know that you can, because mix that with water, the pit artist, but I love using this technique and just kind of like add smudges, smudges. I should probably not use my middle finger. <laughs> So funny. All right. Then I want to add some highlights with that dark circles that I created. What I love to do is highlight them by going around each dot using a lighter color. So right now, if you have a lighter color, like the white, like what I said, silver icing, this one is the metallic icing, but I'm going to dry this one out first. 
The heat gun group is the from Ranger. This is called the Heat It Craft Tool. No, um, Kelly's asking if it's going to blend. No, it's going to dry like an acrylic. So you can blend it, apply it like a watercolor, but once it's dry, it's more like an acrylic where it's not going to blend and move with water. So that's why I love using it. Going over my silver size as well. All right, so I'm just gonna use my metallic icing in here and I'm gonna use the sides of the gelatos so I can get a much more precise shape and I have a better control in here. Like that. Here. And I have a little bit of here, but for here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a blending brush like this, and I'm going to use some of the mandala that we have. Actually, in that mandala set, they have a much smaller one that we can use. This one has like four different. So these are cool. So we're going to do that. This is something you're gonna need in your craft, in your stash, if you're gonna do a lot of mixed media because it's just so nice to spray around things that you wanna blend, you know, you wanna, for example, bring moisture here in this brush. So just kind of spray a little bit in there so you don't get it thoroughly wet, but just enough so that you can pick up the gelatos like this. Just start blending like that. I'm gonna use this one. Like that. So what we did is kind of like we lifted actually the colors that were in here at that and a little bit brought a little bit from this white. So I'm gonna grab baby wipes to clean this brush again. And do that. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll use the same one here. Just pick up, oh, I have a little bit of green in this brush. So <laughs> it's really important to kind of like clean your brushes or at least have one brush for every color for blues, or if you have the cool tones, but just kind of brush it over um, with the baby wipes. It's really easy also. And just hold the handle. I know I never hold the top, I mean, instead of the handle, because I feel like I have a much better control when I'm doing this. Instead of this one, I feel like it's swiggling. Sorry, I'm not a shot. So when you're using it, your blending brush, and you're using your handle, you're holding it here, I feel like it wiggles too much. I don't have enough control. So I like holding it here and then just putting my pointer finger and then just kind of have this. So you have more precise movement and you can really control this head. All right, well, I'm just gonna go clean it up with the baby wipes like that. This time we have the option to set this with a glossy finish. Um, you can spray it. I don't like the spray very much because it really, especially in working with small environment here in the office. So I like using the um, Mod Podge for that. All right, for more mark making here, just adding patterns. to my bottom right. Just to have a little bit of that highlights in there. And then over here also. If you need more precision, just kind of like do that. 
to reveal more of the gelatos and use the side part and kind of move it along, kind of like switch areas where you have more sharp lines on the sides. Here we go. If you want to put in like words in here, like a quote or um, just one word, you can actually use a collage paper like this one. Vellum paper will also work like this. You can put it over there. You can use a gel medium. I love using the um, matte gel like this. This is from Liquitex. I love using that. I also love a glossy finish, but sometimes not too much. So I have the satin and also the glossy. So it just depends on my mood. So I can put in my lettering in here. Write it in a collage or a tissue paper or a vellum paper. Something that's like semi-transparent like this is going to work. And I'm just going to do a little bit of lettering. Oops, the only reason um, why it's not my favorite because it's very thin, but it really truly matches that aesthetic. There we go. And I don't use scissor when I'm doing any type of mixed media like this. I love the peeled look of the paper. So. So we can use the matte gel to kind of glue it in there. And also apply it on top. Like that. So it doesn't lift on you. Then what I would finish this is I would use a, like what I said, a Mod Podge to kind of finish everything in here to set everything just so it will not transfer. But if you just allow a little bit more dry time, the gelatos will not transfer. Once it's completely dry, um, it will not transfer. But if you're like me, I want to just make sure I just like to set things, you know, in here. So whether it's a Mod Podge or like a finish um, setting spray, then you can do so. Um, okay, I'm gonna go over some of the questions. Heat gun, we answered that. What pen did you use to write your original text? Um, I used the Pit Artist pen in black. The Pit Artist pens, they don't normally bleed and they do dry um, fast but I was expecting it a little bit too smudge just because of the gesso that we applied in the beginning. So I know that the gesso will have this tacky, a little bit of tackiness to it. So it will um, give a little bit more drying time for my pit artist to set, to set. But it didn't bleed through very much, but I wanted it to smudge because I wanted that I really intentionally was doing to smudge all the words as well. It was part of the process. But if you don't want it to smudge, I would really allow it to dry and also heat set with a gun just to make sure that it's set in there completely. Um, another one that you can do use for to not smudge would be use your gelatos 
kind of like scribble, a scribble and down and then heat set it. And then you, if you want, you can set it with a Mod Podge at first, just a very, very thin layer of the Mod Podge to set on top of that. And then you can add layers and layers on top of it again. Um, but I would not suggest setting with a Mod Podge quite just yet um, until you make sure that it just depends on how many layers you want to add. I hope that that makes sense. Um, but I think if you don't want to smudge, I would suggest using a vellum paper or a tissue collage paper like this and apply it in there. So it's in a separate layer and then, you know, add your layers on top of that. All right, so Mary said, thank you. You're very, very welcome. How do you apply the Mod Podge? I would just use my palette knife. Let's see if I can open this up. It gets really sticky. They said to put Vaseline on this, the rim. And that's going to help. And I would never, <laughs> never do it. So I would just kind of like go over everything like this with my palette knife, just like that. Make sure that your palette knife is clean, not like mine. But we use the same color, so I'm okay with that as well. Oh my gosh, all the things are still from my knife. Again, I am applying, over applying things in here. I use so much. But this one will give like this pretty satin finish to it. Just allow some drying time so the tackiness will go away or just use your heat gun. But with the Mod Podge, I would most of the time, if I'm not in a hurry or not in a class like this, I would just kind of let it set naturally. Um, there's something different when it's set dried naturally than with a heat gun. I think the heat gun gives it a little bit of tackiness. I could be wrong. It could just be too impatient to find out, but we're going to try this one. We definitely have to do one of these sessions again with mindful journaling. If you enjoy this, please do let me know. I'd love to stay in touch with you on social media. Also, if you have some other um, ideas for future classes and request any um, classes that you'd love to see in the future, you can um, let us know on social media. Send us a message on Instagram or Facebook, send a message directly to Faber Castell USA, or you can send them to me and I'm the one who comes up with the classes. So I uh, would love to hear some of your thoughts and ideas. All right. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining in today. This was super duper fun. Um, I'm just going to flash a little bit of that info for Faber Castell. Here we have Faber Castell USA. I'll make sure to show us some love online. And of course, Michael's stores as well. Here we go. But again, my name is Leigh Bella Ralston. I appreciate you being here with me today. I hope that that was fun. I know that that was super relaxing to me. And that was the end of it. I'm going to have to go back to my packing. But thank you, everybody. Stay well, stay creative, and stay happy. Until the next class, I'll see you then. Bye, everybody.